Hi, you all. Welcome back to the pod. Welcome back to Shay and the Good People. I'm Shay of the Good People, and it's been a while, and I've actually never done a solo episode before. I really had to pee, but my roommate was taking a shower, so I just thought, you know what, let's just start. What the freak am I waiting for? Welcome back. If you have listened to the pod before, we've got some amazing new interviews coming up with folks who have been on Shay and the Good People. If you've never been here before and you're like, what is this? Who are you? What's happening? I love your hair. First off, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. This is a fresh wash. I washed it last night and I worked a catering shift, so I got to walk around and the air through the people, through the wine sloshing, through the, what did we have last night? Like uh, pizza, stealing little appetizers as they're going back to the kitchen. All of that fresh, hot air is what you're seeing today if you're watching on YouTube. If you're listening, it looks curly, it looks a little, I'm looking in the mirror, it looks a little a little shiny on the front, but a little dry on the ends because I'm going gray. I'm going gray quickly. And I listen to, oh my gosh, I'll give you so many updates, but one of my jobs that I'm doing, which I do many jobs, I work for a podcast, like a fitness podcast. I'm doing admin work. And... It's wild to see how much, one, it's wild to see how much support like a really large podcast has. I think it's really helpful for me to see and really cool to see how everything stays organized because that's a big reason why there was a huge break. If you were listening to the podcast before, I think my last episode came out sometime in November. We had 11 interviews and episodes and that took me literally all summer to just stay on top of Um Irving is our podcast editor. He's amazing. You can check out his Instagram. It's in the show notes. Um, he's very diligent and mixes everything. Also mixes all the music that you'll hear throughout the show. Um, he's on top of it. I, on the other hand, take a really long time to get these out because it's it's interesting. It's a challenge as a uh, 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 just one person. <laughs> to do. It's a challenge for one person to do, but I am an Aries, so I attempt it all. But besides that, just life gets in the way. And oh, I was talking about the podcast. So another thing, it's cool to see how many people, how much support there is behind that podcast. Also, there was an episode about gray hair. I was talking about gray hair and how I need like topical DHEA and something else with some other kind of supplements, like a topical. And a part of me is like, okay, cool. It's genetic because I think by the time my dad was this age, he was definitely all gray, but then he dyed his hair platinum blonde as he started drum lessons and then he got a motorcycle and then he left us. So I don't know if any of that is going to happen for me, but it's kind of cool. I just... The only thing I miss, and we know this about gray hair, the, I'm looking at myself in the mirror if you're watching YouTube and you're like, what the freak is she doing? I just, it's just the wiriness. My my uh, my friend Jed, who cuts my hair, he's in Greenpoint at Kept Studio. Um, I wish he would give me a discount, but I understand, you know, he has to eat too. But I, he was like, your curls used to be tighter. Jed has been doing my hair, cutting my hair since I was 17 years old. We did a production of Ragtime together at... Uh, Montgomery County Summer Dinner Theater and he did my hair and then he's been doing my hair ever since and cutting my hair and now he makes a lot of money he's out of my price range but I still do it because I get scared and don't trust anybody else so if you see me out in the world and you see these curly bangs you can talk to Jed about them so anyways I might have to take some topical DHEA for my grays or just let them come in I, I really don't mind I really don't mind the grays I just miss it being like shiny and, and luxury and tight but also it's getting long anyways enough enough about the hair you're still like why who what is this if you're new so Shay and the good people podcast is a pairing kind of like a, a wine to steak pairing of a live show monthly show called Shay and the good people that I host at Pete's Candy Store in Williamsburg. 
and there's three different singer songwriters each show and I host obviously I have to sing obviously I have to be involved <laughs> um and then I started this podcast last year um started getting folks who have been on the show into the studio for their interviews. Um, so you can go back and listen to any of the interviews of artists, singers, performers, actors who have been on Shay and the Good People. And then I have them in the studio and we chat. And this season, most of the people you're going to hear uh, season, whatever. I just took a break and I'm saying seasons, but no one really counts. Um, this time around I'm expanding it I'm gonna have I have some more people who haven't been on the show because also I just know so many incredible artists in New York City and also the reality of like I want to grow the show I want this to get to more people I want more people to hear it I want more people to get inspired and um, some people who haven't been on the show like are in other areas in New York and have um, some nice followings. That's always helpful, but also I just think they're really interesting. And I think I'm trying to solve a problem here. What I perceive as a problem of me not being able to make enough money for my performing to pay my bills. So I have to cater. <laughs> so I'm really just doing this podcast to try to find a way, um, to stop catering. Uh, money would be great, but maybe the schedule is very busy. Maybe we do some live performances, some live productions, productions, live taping of podcasts. People are doing that now. That's my dream is to do um, performance and then interview, which I do see a couple other shows. Well, I guess I haven't seen a show of like a songwriter and then sit down and interview. So actually trademark that. So if anyone's listening to this and wants to do that, you actually can't because legally uh, I own that idea because I just uh, said it out loud and that's how America works. Um, let me give you a little bit of update. So I did spend last fall having more interviews and they banked them. So you'll see in the videos, well, it's, it's springtime now, which is nice, but like some of them I'm in like a tank top and then I'm in a turtleneck sweater with a winter coat on. I'm currently wearing a sweater my signature theater zip up hoodie and my jean jacket and socks and jeans because it's freezing in my room. That's the thing about this apartment and I will be moving this year. I'm stating that I intend to move to another apartment. I'd like to live on my own. Ooh, ooh, did a Brooklyn woman just say that? Ooh, ooh, ooh. She wants to live on her own in Brooklyn. Can she afford it? That's, I think that's a scary, the two scariest things about that would be interesting to come back to this episode later. The two scariest things is one, can I find a place in time for our lease to be up? And two, to find a place that the rent feels doable. You know what? We're always going to, if you choose to be an artist in this city, unless you have a partner that has a lot of money, I don't. Unless you have parents that have a lot of money, I don't. Or other income to support you that's higher than your needs currently don't um it is a choice that you're going to kind of live on your edge which kind of helps like push past or i guess you just use your credit cards which i'm terrified of credit card debt because i have so much so many student loans oh that's another thing if you don't have student loans which is really smart you did really well don't let anyone make you feel bad about that i think that's great your parents cared about you or were listening to the news or didn't have their own agenda or were really poor. Either way, if you don't have student loans for school, that's fucking cool. Um, I have those things. Uh, kind of a lot. Um, but I'm being brave and I intend to move and live on my own. I do live with my sister, one of my roommates, so we've also been looking at two bedrooms. Um, and I'm open to that as well, but I wonder what my capacity will be, you know, when I have my own space. I think there's growth. I've done it once before when I lived in Kingston for a year. I had my Eat, Pray, Love year in like 2021. I probably talked about that in other episodes. Um, and that was really depressing and sad because it was in a mountain town and Kingston's cute, but like, I want to go to Kingston 
and like have a weekend and leave coming back to New York and be like, oh, I want, I, I, I want that wish of like, oh, wouldn't it be so nice to live in the Hudson Valley one day, have that wish and, and not like actually live there. Cause the whole time I was there, I was like, I just want to go back to Brooklyn and I do want to live in Brooklyn now. I really love it. There's a lot of creativity, tons of cool stuff happening here, tons of stuff I'm involved in. And, uh, and I don't want to, and I would like to have the feeling of not like, what's the opposite feeling of like living on the edge financially? Like I want to be comfortable. I've been watching, um, and listening to, I will teach you to be rich. Ramit Sethi's podcasts with the couples. That's really helpful and expansive, even though I am, I am single. <laughs> If you couldn't tell by the bags under my eyes, um, that's no, that's just poor sleep. I'm working on sleep too. That's the thing I'm doing this year. Anyways, that's really helpful. His podcast is really helpful about like money psychology. It's truly, it's like a math problem and a mind problem. Math, at least for me. I don't know what y'all struggle with, but I highly recommend that podcast. I also recommend my friend Anita's podcast manifesting money podcast she hasn't had a ton of new episodes but all of them are great and um follow her on instagram she's she's got a lot of amazing tips for money and manifesting and mindset and limiting beliefs um but last fall i was prepping doing work uh i started a teaching job and then was getting sick and then i quit it after three <laughs> after three months um yeah, I sometimes still feel guilty about that, but it just, it was just not working out. And sometimes you just like, you got to try things like the job came really quickly and then it left really quickly. And now I'm still catering with, for a couple companies. I am working this admin job for a podcast. I do travel with this comedy, um, corporate comedy group called the water coolers. Really <laughs> funny silly and ridiculous and I love getting paid to travel nothing's consistent nothing's like guaranteed well I guess the admin stuff for the podcast is consistent now and um it is part-time so we're just still piecing it together we're just piecing it together financially physically mentally I'm sure you guys can relate in your own ways but um I'd love to move to an apartment where like in the winter it can stay warm because like we're at that technology level. I think we can have that. These windows are old, even though the light's fierce. Um, I took January and February off of this year of just doing the show, Shay and the Good People, because I thought I could stay off social media. I thought I, thought I could give myself a break. Um, that didn't happen. That didn't happen. No, no, because I did, I had the full band show at Bowery. So uh, in January, so I had to promote that. And then I don't know what happened in February. I just, I don't know. I was just on there, I guess, prepping for then the March show. But anyways, we're back. We're back at Pete's. Um, so come see us at Pete's Candy Store right now. We're the second Tuesday of every month. Um, if you want to come to a show, you can always, uh, you do want to come to a show. When you come to the show, you should go to our Instagram at Shay and the Good People. It's in the show notes, but it's just spell it all the way out. S-H-A-Y-N-A-A-N-D-T-H-E-G-O-O-D-P-E-O-P-L-E. I can't really spell that's kind of my one flaw. I can't really spell. And I still need my fingers to count. Um, I also, I want to, I have a question for you guys. For you all. I was working coat check last week. And somebody tipped me in a $5 Dunkin' gift card. Which is so fierce i'm obsessed with duncan i love duncan dunk i don't get it often but duncan is my road trip coffee my road trip and um like uh croissant um i also realized i didn't put i'm taping this on my phone i didn't put it in airplane mode 
So if a call came in, this video's done. But we'll see what happens. Um, Duncan is great. And I it was $5, which I think is very cute and reasonable for, to give to... People don't even give $5 for a coat check. So, and here's my question. I have held on to this gift card for a week and a half. And I want to make it feel special. I really want to know what you guys would do with the Duncan gift card. If you got a $5 Duncan gift card, would you save it for a fierce day, a fierce moment? Would you save it for, uh, I know I'm going to be rushed at some point. There's literally a Duncan right by, my, by the train, that my subway stop. Would you save it for like a rushed moment? Would you save it for, I'm running around the city in New York City and I don't want to spend my own money and I would save my gift card or we'd just be like, oh, cool. Next day, like I'm going to Duncan. Would you savor it? Would you save it? Because savor and savor are different, obviously. Savor and savor are savor and savor and saving is two different energies. You know, you think about it. Your savoring is like, mm, oh, my God, like. I can't wait to spend this and I am going to really make it count. And saving it is like <laughs> scarcity is the opposite. It's like I'm going to get my fridge down to when I, at least I know I have this Duncan. Like it's February or July or August, which historically have been pretty slow financially for me. But I don't know. Things, things could turn around at any second, sweetie. Things could turn around. And saving is like, I'm, I better save this for when I'm hungry. <laughs> That's so bad. Um, so I want to know from you. Comment on this YouTube video. Or if you're just listening on the spots or the apps, Muse. Go to Instagram. Tag me. Tag at Shane the Good People. And tell me. Saver. Saving. Save it. Or spend it one of those three S's, what would you do? I'm really interested. Also, mentally, mental check where I'm at. I actually feel good. I feel fine. I haven't been on one date this year. It's about to be May. Um, and that's fine. I honestly don't care. I'm tired. And um, sure. I'd love for somebody to buy me bolognese. I would love that. Actually, I did go on it. My birthday was a couple weeks ago. Shout out to my girlies who came out to my B-Day dinner. Um, we went to Milk and Roses. Okay. In Greenpoint. Okay. Committed to abundance. Um, it was really gorgeous. There was only two other tables there. And I said, you guys have to leave because it's my birthday. I need the whole space to myself. Thank you. In my head, I said that. And it was really delicious. A wee bat pricey, a wee bat pricey, I would say, for the for the size of pasta. I mean, it was good, but it was a little on the pricey side. But my girlies um, paid for me because it was my birthday and my sister was there. And she helps me remind me, like, let, I just, like, didn't want to order too many things because we're all, we're, we're not all at the same place financially, but we're all artists and we're still young and, um majority of the table was single <laughs> so, um but I think I did a good job in allowing them to take care of me and pay for my dinner it was very sweet I got a, a crisp club soda and help me with this I said can I please get a club soda with lemon juice I want like the fresh lemon juice you know for cocktails can I have a little bit of lemon juice in the club soda because I'm three and a half years sober honey but I still deserve bubbles and I'm still fun. I received the club soda in a rocks glass with a circle slice of lemon. No lemon juice. So that's pretty devastating. I don't know if you know what's going on in the world, but that was pretty devastating. And I'm just confused because I don't want to be a dick. I don't want to ask again. But even just the circle, the circle 
lemon slice how am i supposed to get lemon out of that fold it like a pizza and squeeze it and then it goes all over the place and my my all of my fingers the last digits are just covered in lemon it smells like lemon for the rest of the meal i don't know what the exactly what the food's going to be like is lemon going to be palatable is it going to be comparable I don't know, but that was that was probably the most disappointing thing about my whole birthday, <laughs> which is great. Much better than last year's. I didn't have any um, anxiety. I didn't have any birthday anxiety. I know you guys have this. I've had it a multiple years. Um, I don't. I don't know what it was. I don't really contribute it. I think it's just like I was. I think I was just really busy that week and the week after and I wanted to do a big birthday hang on, on the weekend but it was still cold because it's like now still cold at the at, in April um in New York City but it was good I don't know it was chill I I really hope that for you like if it's not an amazing incredible birthday I hope it can just be a chill neutral birthday for you but I I have had the depressing fuck the doomsday birthday i'm sure you have too and yeah as you know it's like it sucks because we're not here for a long time so why would we dread a birthday that's crazy unless it was a really bad year then i understand but but like then turn a page turn a new leaf and just hope and pray that and and intend to have a better year or better day that's all i can do y'all other mental check two books um i'm reading Reclaiming Pussy, mm -hmm. which goes hand in hand with success as an inside job. Literally, both things are on the inside. Those work together because there's like an inner confidence with Reclaiming Pussy. And then there's like a little bit of a capitalistic, um, psychological... Um, puzzle piece that you can do with success as an inside job. I do like it. I do like both of them. I wish there was a little bit more concreteness to the success as an inside job, but in terms of like steps to take, but I'm just the kind of person that really needs it all laid out. <laughs> and that's my, that's one of my biggest flaws too, is like, well, how do I do this? How do I get to the next level in my career? How do I get a boyfriend how do i get laid again maybe that's the easiest um one to answer but how just the i get stuck up stuck up i get hung up on the how the how of how to do everything and that sometimes that's a part of like spirituality that's a part i think of being an artist is like you literally can only do as much as you can do if you can be super, what I have found for me is if I can just be super clear about what I want, uh, put some action items down, think about uh, like what I could do next and then literally let it go, which is so annoying. <laughs> but sometimes I just have to enjoy my life which is where I'm at now I'm like I just want to make my life I think I will care less about having a boyfriend less about having a partner less about um where I'm at like career wise when am I gonna get an agent um when is someone gonna see me and be like you're a star and take me to the next level let me open for them in Vegas and take me on their Europe tour I don't know any of those things it would be really fun to know when exactly but I really my main goal right now is just to fully enjoy my life like just feel so full that I kind of forget about those things most of the time like I'm sure I will still like think about those but maybe like 80 20 like 80 percent I'm really loving my life and loving where I'm at and then 20 percent is like oh my gosh, I need to figure this out now and and I need to get out of catering. But honestly, it's fine. It was like a really nice shift last night. I flirted with someone hot and 
I had, we had a ton of food. I brought like four pizzas home. <laughs> there were like little pizzas. The night before that, we had a ton of food. The night before that, very kind. One of the um, captains like ordered extra meals for us. Ugh. So I, there's really nothing, nothing to complain about. The food, how, how easy am I? I'm like, they got food. So like, it's totally fine that we get yelled at or um, I burn my arm on the hot water spigot when I'm trying to refill the coffee. It's totally fine. It's just on my forearm. Um, they got food. I got vegetables. And what else did I get? Vegetables, potatoes, pizza. You know, a little bit goes a long way. I have some celebrity run-ins I should talk about, maybe. Maybe if you guys want to hear that, go to Shane the Good People and message or tag me and say, we want to know. Um, but I'm so happy to be back. This is fun. This was fun to do a solo episode. If you guys like this also, let me know. I'm just in my freaking bedroom. It looks really clean right now, but literally over here to my left is the largest pile of laundry. I'm a laundry girl. I'm a clean sheets, clean clothes girl, but I'm not a folding girl. Mm. Just let that sink in. I am not a folding girl. So if you want to date me, Kind of one of the most important things to me is that you like to fold laundry because <laughs> I just let it sit. I'm so busy. That's my excuse. I'm so busy. Anyway, I love you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the podcast. Please share it. We're getting the word back out. Please come to a show. Fill in Pete's. It's, if you've never been to Pete's Candy Store, it's so cute and humble and like inviting and I just love doing the show there. Thank you for everyone. What am I trying to say? Thank you to, thank you for everyone. Thank you to everyone who has listened last season is listening again. If you're new here, I'm so, 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 so happy that you're here. I really love you. Share this episode if you liked it or if you think it's silly or if you think it's ridiculous or if you know me or if you're my family, extra pressure on you to share this with people. Leave us a five-star review, like us, all that stuff. As I'm sure you know, it really helps with us getting out there, helping me get the word out there. And yeah. I'm really excited for you guys to hear the rest of the season. So enjoy. I'll see you out there. Bye. Yeah. Try to leave the house before the sun. Feels good to go. Feels good to run. Need that moment when my face gets numb. I'm doing better. Roll the windows down, the noisier December's just begun, but I don't care Got my head on straight, I feel all there I'm doing so much better It doesn't matter anyway You're stuck in North Carolina, baby I hope I will forget